When I thought about renewing and um, facelift my Oracle Forms interface, I did a web research on it. What actually are some principles on the design of user interfaces? And some points really um, came to my attention. And these are, the number one, it really is the clarity. That you need to have a clear user interface that really helps you to understand with one side what happens on the screen. So this also takes in consideration that you should have one primary action per screen. That um, everything is clear and you have you know exactly what you're doing on that specific screen. A very important thing is appearance follows behavior. So we are humans and humans like that stuff does what they expect what it should do. So we like other people that do what we expect them to do and we also like software that does what we expect the software to do. Another point is that consistency matters. It really helps to go through application, to work with the application. If everything is the same, it has the same appearance, and the behavior of functionality is throughout your application is the same and keeps consistent. Also, hi highlight um, important stuff with color and don't overdo your application with a color. And also, a good application has an inline help that means the application is self-explaining and you don't need a huge documentation to understand how this application works. There are a lot of other points, and when you do a web research, you will find a long list how to improve your user interface and how to make it good appearance, modern and new. Today, I actually want to talk out of this list about clarity and show you how we can help you to um, make the design of your form application lighter and easier to, for the eye to uh, pay attention. I also pay, uh, want to pay attention on consistency matters, that how we can help you to bring consistency inside of your application, and also how to highlight uh, with color the important things in your application. How does the Forms application look like after a Forms upgrade? So the most of the people that use Oracle Forms um, started in character mode, 3.0, or in 6i, um, in, in the first, or 4.5 in the first GUI mode that was available for Forms. And usually a form looked like this. When you do a standard upgrade, upgrade from 6i to Oracle Forms, and don't do any changes, probably a form looked like something like this. Um, I would prefer probably the 6i look and feel and the new 11G one that Oracle provides as a standard. But actually with some small simple changes we can make a huge improvement on the look and feel of our forms application. So some simple changes on the WebLogic configuration, we, what we have is the color scheme we can work with. By default the color scheme is on a teal. This is the green color you could see. So there are a lot of color schemes that are actually not published, but you can play around in Google a little bit and you will find some. The two that I like the most is the bluff. I know that stands for browser look and feel, and the other one is swan. I have not the time yet to figure out what this actually stands for. But when we change in our custom configuration, these two, uh, uh, to one of these two parameters, and also, I did some changes. For example, I removed the rectangle, and I set the background color of all items to undefined. Then our forms application starts to look like this. So we have here the browser look and feel, and on the right side, we do have the swan look and feel color scheme from Oracle. So when we compare it to the state what we have been before, it makes actually a huge um, difference on the appearance of the application. Now it's not heavy anymore, it has light colors, and it uh, invites you to use actually the application. And that was accomplished just with the small little changes inside of my form, and especially also of a very small change of the configuration of, my, uh, of the WebLogic server. For consistency matters, how do I harmonize my canvases or my screen? One thing is, you should use a defined set of colors. And 
bring the color uh, to functionalities. So for example, you should define before that you have four or five different colors that define what you want to um, display with them and then actually use them for the specific needs you have. And I will show you later an example on how we accomplish this in our own application. You should use the same fonts in the application. So if you have in every screen a different font, it's a little hard to for the for the user to follow and also it doesn't please the eye really if you have on one screen five or six different fonts. So define two or three different fonts that you want to use for specific purposes. So for example, have a font for your prompt, have a font for text items that contain text, and have a specific font for numbers. So the user really can identify, okay, here I answer I need to answer a number because this has a specific font. Here I have I have to enter a text and so on. The same counts for actually font sizes. Just define three sizes. One for a header, another one for the items, and a smaller one that you actually have for uh, actually use for um, information that is not necessary for a user to read every time, but maybe just interesting for the first time when he enters a screen. Another thing that helps to um, harmonize your screen is to use the same sizes of canvases or your standard canvases. So that when you go from one form to the other, that the application is not hopping around, that actually it's just the content of the screen uh, changes and not the canvas itself changes the size and resizes all the time. It makes it very uh, easy to work with when the user has the feeling he works with one application and is not jumping from one application to the other. Um, and we also, I will also show you later how you can accomplish this, um, how, we, how we can help you to accomplish this. And then highlight the important fields. So in a forms application, the important fields are usually the required items. So it really helps a user when he knows uh, which fields he has to enter before he leaves the block. So he doesn't leave the block and then recognize, oh, I forgot to enter something here enter this, leave the block again, get the next information that he has to enter it, and so on. So if he sees with the first sign, okay, I have to enter this and this and this and this field, it helps him to um, work faster and he more likes to work with that application. Another thing uh, we recognize uh, when you have a legacy forms application, you probably developed it for a resolution for 800 times 600 um, pixels. So when you run it now on a new resolution, 1,200 times 786, so probably your application looks something like this. It's very small, very hard to read, and very hard to work, so you have to concentrate, concentrate to see everything. And on the other hand, you have a lot of open space that you actually can't use. It's useless in this case. So when you zoom your application to uh, make it uh, usable for a, for a um, resolution were 1,500 times 786, then your application looks like this. Now it's readable, it's better, you can better work with it, and so on. So it really helps you to fit the size of your screen to the resolution that you have to the new resolutions with the new um, screens that are available now. Another way how to actually extend or improve the look and feel of your uh, forms application is then to use Java components. There are three ways to actually extend the UI experience of your forms application. One is pluggable Java components that actually extends the existing Oracle forms UI components. So it overrides the Oracle classes and gives you the ability to change the appearance of buttons, text items, blocks, canvases, as you like to have it, as you need it, and actually also change this at runtime. Another, if this is not enough, the pluggable Java component, you can use Java Beans to add actually uh, more functionality to the, the, the forms application. So you can use non-native UI elements uh, like uh, graphs and other uh, Java, Java Beans. So for example, you can replace, uh, in, in a 6i you could use uh, Oracle Graphics and 11G, this is not supported anymore, 
So you can replace this very easily with a Java Bean um, chart tool. And another option then would also be to use JavaScript to do simple changes into the appearance of the browser and so on. So as an example for a Java Bean, I selected actually a Google Maps integration into a Forms application. So you can see here a canvas, a Forms canvas, where a Java Bean is integrated and it pulls the data from the Forms application and shows you where your customer actually is located um, for in, in this case. So a map integration is a non-native uh, element of Forms. So we extend the elements of uh, UI elements of Forms with the Java Bean. Now comes the question, how do I integrate Java into my Forms application? The first step is actually to get the JAR file you created or you can download on a, from the internet and for the next uh, few slides, I will use the example from François de Grel that actually um, did a very good job on the Oracle Forms Java Look and Feel project and he put it in the inter or he started that project actually and now a lot of people, Forms and Java developers participating on this um, project to help us to make our Forms applications more usable and nicer looking. So I will use his examples also on my presentation. So a great thank you to Francois that he started this project. So first thing is actually to integrate uh, or add the jar file to our archive path. So for example, where you have on all jar is located that is necessary to run your forms application. The second step then would be to actually configure your forms web CFG section to add the jar file there so the client application actually knows that what to download to the client and utilize on the client end. The third part is that I have to define the implementation class in the forms builder. I selected actually a button as an example, a push button, and I overrode the Oracle class with the uh, Oracle class that, in, uh, that is in the look and feel project. And and the next step then can be that you can customize also the look and feel of the object in the form's runtime. So in runtime you can change the behavior of items, you can change the look and feel of items. So in our case what we did, we added an image to a button and we also set the background uh, to transparent so that you just see the image and you don't see the border or anything like this. And the result of this and the effect to these changes is that you have buttons like this that look very nice, modern, and actually you want to click them, in my opinion. There are endless possibilities of Java integration into um, your Forms application. So as an example, I took out some examples. For example, here we have a table block decoration where you can see what you can do on actually a, a very simple form a block that is on the old 6i style that you actually can make it very colorful and very nice appealing as the users like to work with it. Maybe this is a little bit overdone but I, we just wanted to show what is possible to do. You already seen the transparent buttons and then I want to show you a real life application dialog. So this application actually is a forms application and it utilizes the complete um, look and feel project to make it look like a web application. So it looks really nice and appealing to work with. So you have here the buttons, the blocks are changed, um, it uses the color, and also you have some panels that are also inside part of the look and feel project. Now comes the question, how can this actually help you and why we can help you to uh, accomplish all these tasks? One thing is when we put our experience together from all our developers, we have over 100 years combined Oracle Forms and Reports experiences. Our, our, our developers and our consultants are dedicated Oracle Forms developers and Oracle Reports developers. They know every, almost every bit and byte because they worked on it on different applications 
and especially they worked on our own application. Um, we develop and modernize our own application. Our own application we actually provide for our customers started in 6i. We upgraded it to 9i, 10g, 11g and in that process we also modernized and the look and feel and the functionality of our application. And the third part is why we can help you is we do have a mass changing tool for Oracle Forms and Reports. So it's called PIPCON. Um, and PIPCON actually can all the changes that I showed you before can not just apply to one form, it can apply it as a bulk change to all of your forms. And I will point out um, in, in my live demonstration um, right after that slide uh, what we did with PIPCON to actually make the look and feel nicer and integrate Java and I'll also show you what our tool can do to help you to accomplish these tasks. But before we do this, let me do a short introduction into our tool, what it is for the people who doesn't know um, PIPCON yet. So PIPCON is a repository based development tool that helps you for forms and reports, that helps you to maintain your application, to analyze your application and actually keep track of your change management. So the development part, actually the part that does the or, and the visualization and the multi-language is the part that does the math changes. So it is really there to actually um, change source code, change properties and objects, to change the visual design and also apply a multi-language to your application. Application analysis gives you an overview on dependencies or also a deep analysis on dependencies. So it answers your questions, where is the table used, where is the program unit used, what does the program unit use, kind of it is, it is an online documentation for your forms and reports application. Application engineering and the modernization part is then actually the way how you can modernize your application. Application engineering analyzes business logic and helps you to move it to the database so you can put a web service on it and prepare your form application to integrate it into a service-oriented architecture. Modernization part brings it to the latest technology. Source code analytics and source control is there for the management to actually keep track on changes and source code analytics also helps the management to analyze key performance indicators, quality assessments, checks the complexity of your form's application and so on. So now let's go into our tool PITCON, so you can see what we did to modernize our forms uh, PITCON as a forms application and also what it can do to help you. So the first thing we did is we played around, of course, with the forms web CFG uh, color scheme. So we used the Swan color scheme to have a nice background, to have a nice appearing on it and to get everything in a really nice um, general look and feel. Then we also used for our um, modules or programs we have for everyone a specific icon that really indicates what it does so at the first few you know what it really does. And then we did a little color coding for our functionality. So for example we have our above buttons mean this is the administration of the tool of the user. The orange button indicates that here you can do math changes in the application. The pink button is the analysis part, the purple button are the modernization part, and the blue button are the management part that shows that um, here you can, it's for project managers, so you can control and, and do analysis on the development progress and keep track on changes. So this is the stuff what we did to our application to make it nice and modern when you think about how our 6i application looked like and PITCON actually looked like a 6i application two years ago. So we did a huge improvement on the look and feel on this. So now how can our tool actually help you to accomplish the changes? So we have the one tool is change properties. In change properties we can actually search for objects like for example an item we do have here and we can say, okay, I'm looking for all push buttons. And this is the item type uh, push button. 
and I can set here my implementation class, for example, to the class to apply it to uh, the nice Java look and feel button. When I now press run task, Pitcon will loop through all the buttons inside of my application. It doesn't matter if it's one form, 200 forms, 1,000 forms. It will go through them in a very quick way. It maybe takes a few minutes, but it's just a matter of minutes to actually apply these uh, to overwrite the Java class with the standard Oracle class. So your general appearance will be have the nice uh, look and feel, a uh, button look and feel that you have in here. We also can help you, for example, to harmonize your canvases. So you can go in here, select for a canvas, and then we can go in here and say, okay, all canvases that are actually bigger than 1,000 pixels, please change them to 1,100. And so the width of all your canvases that have already over, that are over a specific size, will then harmonize and have exactly the same size. You can do the same for the width and so on. And also another thing we have on items, for example, to harmonize actually or to, to show what is important in your application is that we show that all um, text items that are required, and all text items that are required, now I need to find required, one second. Here it is, are required equals yes. I can set actually my visual attribute group to VA required, for example, if I have this, um, and so that all my required items will be highlighted and the user knows exactly that this is there. Actually, one of our clients made an estimation on doing this for 1,000 forms, and his estimation was he needs for this uh, three men months. And with PISCON, we have then accomplished this task within um, an hour to do everything. And the test showed that we didn't miss anything. So you see already on a task like this, you have a huge return of invest to harmonize your application. In copy reference objects, for example, if you don't have the visual attribute group um, at, at reference to all your forms, you can reference it to all your forms also but with a one button click. Another thing that can help you is the visual design. So we have a, funct a project that's called Zooming. The Zooming, you can say, okay, I want to zoom my application to 120%. You can define which properties you want to zoom. So your task is act your, your program is actually really um, everything is zoomed or just a part of it will be zoomed. So for example, forget about the editor, leave this the original size. And so PITCON can help you to adjust your resolution to your size to the current new standard resolution. Um, uh, also, we have a client at Allianz. They have actually estimated uh, two days per form with 180 forms. So this would be a task with 360 men days, and we accomplished the task in five days with our tool. So also, it helps, gives you back a really great return of investment. The last thing I want to show you is our look and feel project or explain it to you, show, not show. What it actually does is it utilizes the look and feel project from Francois de Grel that actually um, we prepare your application so you can use that project. Um, we do all the bulk change you need to do, so replace the implementation class with the one from the, um, from the Java project. So you just have to do small changes in the look and feel, check that the look and feel looks good. So the bulk work, we will take care about it, and you just have to do the real nice stuff of adjusting the UI to your needs and your look and feel. So now I showed you everything um, about what you can do on the form site. Um, I will now pass over to my colleague, uh, Gavin Woods, and he will show you how you can utilize ADS to integrate into your phone's application to also get the best out of your um, phone's application by using ADS. So I make him present enough. All right.
Good. All right. Thank you, Patrick. So for today, we're going to quickly discuss about forms and ADF integration and really how you can kind of extend your current applications to integrate in some really nice uh, ADF written applications. So Oracle ADF, or Application Development Framework in, in, in the long form, um, is a web interface uh, really designed to enable developer productivity, but also give you platform versatility in mind when you're developing your applications. And these are some, actually some examples of uh, ADF web applications that you can quickly design through JDeveloper. Now, ADF overall, you can actually run on multiple platforms, as, as I was mentioning earlier. Uh, you can run on the browser uh, through PCs or Macs. Uh, you can also uh, integrate locally with your desktops as well. Uh, third, you can also develop mobile applications through JDeveloper. And that's a really nice uh, tool as well because you don't really need to have too much knowledge or experience uh, with the local iOS or Android uh, uh, operating systems. Instead, you can actually use just the widgets within JDeveloper to develop a nice application for both platforms. And lastly, of course, you can integrate in with Microsoft Office uh, through ADF. And of course, if you look on the bottom half here of the screen, uh, you can also integrate ADF really with a number of sources, whether it be legacy systems or mature applications like Oracle Forms. Uh, you can also integrate also with web services or almost any SQL 92 compliant database. So really overall, uh, the idea of ADF and Fusion Middleware as a whole is to enable integration. Now, when we actually talk about integration, there's a number of things you can actually do. And we're just going to focus purely on integrating forms with ADF. Now, for instance, one of the first examples is you can run forms within ADF applications. Uh, and this really can be more meant as a portal to open up uh, forms within ADF applications. And that's a very common thing to do for, for customers. And really, all you really need to do is incorporate just the native components within ADF called inline frame to uh, run the form applet. Now, a second option is to actually use a portal. You can use utilize ADF or Web Center functionality to open up both forms and ADF applications together. Um, you can also integrate for security purposes Oracle Access Manager, and we'll discuss a little bit more on that later. And lastly, you can also open up ADF screens from forms. And this is actually another popular solution as well because Sometimes some things, um, you know, form doesn't provide all the user interface capabilities that you may want. Thus, you can actually generate those screens in ADF and integrate them tightly uh, with Oracle Forms. Now, you can open up applications, uh, you know, from either Forms or from ADF and vice versa. But you can also have a more tighter integration and actually pass data between both AEF and Forms applications. For the first example, we can actually have Forms invoke ADF logic through 11G's JavaScript integration. Uh, and actually, this is done through ADF client listeners and uh, purely Forms 11G JavaScript built-ins. This is a new functionality added to Forms 11G. You can also have ADF invoke Forms logic through JavaScript. And what ADF is really doing is he is actually calling a forms level PL SQL trigger uh, to run events asynchronously. And again, this is another part of 11G functionality that was added. Um, lastly, you can actually integrate or have AEF invoke forms through advanced queuing. It's also another brand new functionality added to 11G. And really what it does is ADF contacts your form session through the database to enable, again, asynchronous events. So if you want to really piece everything together into like a diagram, you really would have something more looking like this. So really, you have PLSQL talking to ADF. And really, you can have uh, really almost any integration interface you want, whether it be through Java, external events, event queuing, JavaScript, or web services even. There's actually other examples as well you can do. But these are the most popular ones used by our customers. Now, as I mentioned before, you can 
open up forms applications from ADF or vice versa. You can pass data between both sessions. Uh, but one thing you definitely need to keep in mind is the security component as well. Um, really the best solution to use for security is Oracle Access Manager. What this does is it provides a single sign-on functionality so you can access both applications uh, through relative ease. Now, um, some customers may not actually have Oracle Access Manager licenses, but really it's a very common license to have. So if you have uh, with the Oracle WebLogic suite licenses, you do have Oracle Access Manager licenses. Now, if you don't have OAM, that's no problem as well. You can actually develop your own custom solution or you can obviously contact us. Now, for an actual example, we actually did this for one of our customers, DTE Energy. Uh, and what we did was, this was a train, uh, train coordinating application. So basically they have all these coal trains that send you know, coal respectively to all the different power plants from the coal mine. Now their application all it did simply was you just configure the trains and you tell how much coal, how many cars, et cetera, are on the train. But they needed actually a calendar to really see how all of these trains were scheduled. And because really prior to that, prior to having this calendar, all they had really was a piece of paper and pencil to really schedule all these coal trains. They want a more automated way of doing this. And that's what we did with ADF. We developed an ADF calendar uh, to provide nice, a rich user interface to really quickly and effectively uh, schedule your coal trains. Now, one of the key things, however, was to really have the ADF calendar application tightly integrated with the forms application. So respectively, we used a little bit of JavaScript to integrate both of the applications as well. We're going to do a quick little demo to show you really how that works. And of course, lastly, um, one of the other things was to actually have the web calendar also accessible on mobile devices. And thankfully for ADF, they make that integration very easy as well. So let's go show you an example. So this is a, just a demo application, a more dumbed down version of the application running at DTE. But it's a very basic application. So up top here, we have create, edit, and delete trains. This is the form side of things where you can actually view trains, configure them, et cetera. But really, you know, if you look at this, it's really hard to kind of schedule trains, thus they needed the calendar scheduler. So we'll open up the calendar scheduler. And this is really how the scale scheduler looks. So it has nice drag and drop functionality, really nice rich user interface. You have filtering, et cetera. But really the, the coolest part of it all is it tightly integrates with Oracle Forms. So what I'm doing is I'm going to be right clicking on the actual train and it's going to call Oracle Forms and query for more details on this train. As you see, we go immediately back to the forms application and it queries for that respective train. So overall, uh, this is probably the most deepest example you can talk about in terms of forms and ADF integration, uh, but you really do have a lot of additional options as well. So really with that said, um, this is a really overall good example of how you can make nice complement screens in ADF and really have them integrated with forms. To, to, to really deliver a nice user interface. So. so coming back to our presentation here. <laughs> yeah, right, towards the end here. So really reach towards the end here. Um, if you have any other questions, either on ADF integration, uh, we have an entire presentation really going in much more detail about this as well. So if you're interested, let us know. Um, if you have any more questions as far as facelifting your forms, feel free to contact us.